the Python programming language has a variety of data types called composite data types. Uh, composite data types are ones that can hold more than one value. You know, you got number things like numbers, which can only hold a single number, but a composite data type can hold, let's say, several numbers, or can even hold a whole bunch of strings or a whole bunch of uh, true/false val values and so forth. So forth. Um, there, there's two other data types I'm going to show you in other videos. Those are tuples and sets. This one focuses on one called a list. Uh, in, in Python, they're called lists. They could also be called arrays, and some other programming languages call them vectors. They're all pretty much the same thing. Lists can hold any number of values, not just a few. They can hold as few as zero, or they could hold uh, basically an infinite number of values. The values or elements of a list are ordered. That is, there's a, a first element, a second, a third, and a last one. They can be expanded by adding elements. They can be shrunk by removing elements. And you can alter the values of the elements. Now, the other composite data types, like tuples and sets, they don't necessarily have all the same features that, that lists have. They're, they're used for other things. So let's take a look at lists. We're going to use idle, the Python shell, where we can just type in some stuff and see what happens. We can define lists right here and see what they look like. In Python, lists are defined by a square bracket and then just listing out all the elements that you want to see in it. Like I want to make a list called one, uh, that consists of the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. And press enter. You can see it says the values of the list 1, 2, 3, and 4 are those values. I can put them in in different orders, like 1, 4, 5, 2, 7. And you can see it retains the order. The, the, for, the 1 is at the beginning and the 7's at the end. Uh, I can put in even some duplicates, like I can go 5, 2, 4, 5, 7, 2, and the, the duplicate 5 and 2's are, are kept and the order is retained as well. Um, I can also make a list of names, maybe uh, Bob, Sue, and John, and you can see that it says that those those names are Bob, Sue, and John. Now. I can assign each one of these lists to a variable so that I don't have to keep typing in, typing them in over and over again. Like I can say that a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And maybe uh, I got something called names, and that's equal to Bob, Sue, and John. So the value of A is 1, 2, 3, 4, and the value of names is Bob, Sue, and John. Now I can look at the individual elements of these arrays. Like if I want to look at the first element of A, I just write A, and then in brackets I put the number 0, because in Python all lists start with element number 0. So A has four elements in it. That means its elements are numbered 0, 1, 2, and 3. So A0 should be 1, A1 is 2, and A... 3 is the last one, that's 4. Do the same thing with names. Names 0 should be Bob, and names 2 should be John. If I want to make A longer, if I want to add something to A, I can say append, a.append, and then put a number in there, let's say, and now the value of A has the 8 on the end, and A sub 4 is now that value 8. Okay, so that's how you define lists. That's how you access elements. We can also change elements, like if I want to change the value of A2, I could set that to be 10, and now you can see that one has changed. Um, so uh, d listing out all the elements is fine. Sometimes you want to make lists that consist of a, a whole bunch of numbers, but the numbers are in order. I mean, they're, they're in consecutive order. So like if I want a list of all the numbers from 4 through 10, I can use a function called range. Now, so as so I say range, parentheses, 4, comma, and then this will give me a range of all the numbers from 4, and then I'm going to put in another number. Normally you think of putting 10 there, but really what range does is it gives you all the numbers from the first number up to, but not including, the second number. So if I want to go from 4 to 10, I really have to go 4 to 11. And it comes back and it says, hey, you've got a range from 4 to 11. It hasn't actually calculated the values of those things yet. So I can convert them to a list by using the list function. 
And there we go. Now we can see all the elements of that list. So it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Notice it does not include 11 itself. So you use a, a list, and then inside parentheses, you put in something that can be converted into a list, like a range, and then you can see all the elements. So here, here's how you can put all that stuff together. You, you may have heard about something called list builder or set builder from your math class. And what this allows you to do is construct a list, but specify maybe a calculation for each one of the elements rather than listing out each one of the elements separately. My example will be, I want to construct a list of all the even numbers from 2 to 20. So I want 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. I can think of two easy ways to do this, and I'll, I'll show you both of them. One is, let's start with the numbers 1 through 10, and then multiply each one of those by 2 to get 2 through 20. So if I start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, multiply each one by 2, I should get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so, and so forth. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make a list. So again, it's brackets. And we're going to start with a range from, let's see, we have to write it as 1 through 11. And then we'll take each one of those elements and assign it to a variable called x. <clears throat> and then we'll say, um, each one of those x's, we're going to multiply them by 2. So here's how we write this. I know that was sort of, sort of convoluted way of writing it, but let's go over it uh, in, in detail here. So we're going to start with the range 1 through 10, which we have to represent it as 1 through 11. Each one of those elements will be called x, and then we're, for each one of those, we're going to multiply them by 2. So let's see if that works. Yes, perfect. There they all are. So I, I wrote that kind of in reverse. After you get used to it, you can write it forwards. But um, let, let's look at the other way. The other way I thought about doing was, why don't we actually start with all the numbers through through 20? So that, that is list range 2 comma 21. And that gives us the numbers 2 through 20. And then we'll, we'll go through that list and we'll filter out all the ones that are odd. Or uh, another way of putting it is we're going to keep the ones that are even. So we're going to use that same list builder. We're going to say we've got a set of x's for x in range 2, comma 21, which should give us the, the list we have right above here, which is all those numbers. But then we're going to apply a filter to it to say only keep the x's if x modulo 2 is equal to 0. So we're going to kind of do the same thing before. We're going to start with the range 2 through 20. We're going to call each one of them x, and we're going to say, keep that x if, when we divide it by 2, we get a remainder of 0, which means it's even. And let's see what we come up with here. Ah, great. It's the same as what we had before. 2 through 20, it matches this one up here. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, so we could take that list we've got and we can assign it to a variable as well. So I'm going to press control P to bring up my previous expression and then I can press control A to go to the beginning of it and then I'll say let's call that evens. So this is a list of all the even numbers. There we go. 2 through 20. Um, here's what we could do. We could let's say take all of the numbers from B you remember that B was, whoops, no, I'm not sorry, let's do A. Remember A, A was this list of numbers, 1, 2, 10, 4, and 8, and I want to add the number 1 to each one, so I want to come up with 2, 3, 11, 5, and 9, so I want to add 1 to each one of those elements. Here's what we can do, so Y plus 1 for Y in A. So that says, take everything out of A, call each one of them Y, and then apply the expression y plus 1 to each one. There. That's what we wanted. And the last one I'm going to show you here, uh, dealing with numbers, is I want to, let's say, take that and I want to filter out, or I want to remove everything that is less than, let's say, 8. So I should be left with 11 and 9. So let's say I want a list of z for z in a, 
um, if z is greater than or equal to 8. So I want to take everything in A, call each one of them z, and then keep them if each one of those z's is greater than 8. And there we go. Oh, yes, that, that should be this one here. 10 and 8. Great. So we can work with numbers. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you here are strings. Strings are just lists of characters, and strings are represented in Python by typing them inside single quotes. You know, for example, I've got a string, hello world, and the, the value of that is hello world. That's, that's not that impressive here. But um, if I bring that up here and I assign it to a variable, let's say, let's call that high. Now the value of high is hello world. Um, I can look at the first character of hi, which is should be an H. Yep. I can look at the tenth character of I, which is a D. I can look at the eleventh, which is that exclamation mark. And then I could do something like uh, y you know that characters in in in, in uh, computers are represented using numbers, which are called the ASCII characters, and we can convert uh, this entire string, hello world, into ASCII characters. So here, here's how we do it. The first thing we need to do is we need to break up this, this thing called hi into its individual characters. So we'll convert that to a list. There we go. So now we've got a list of each individual character. And then we can use our list builder to apply a function called ORD. So ORD of, let's say, H gives us the ASCII value for H, which is 72. Let's apply that function to each one of these characters. So we'll come up with, let's say, ORD of x for x in list hi. And there we go. There's all the ASCII characters so we, uh, of each one of the characters inside of the string hello world. So we started with hi, whose value is hello world. We converted it into a list which gives us the individual characters. And then we applied this function called ORD, the ordinal number, for each one of the characters in that list. And we get a list of all the ASCII values. So that's a basic introduction to lists and list builder and converting between characters and ASCII. Uh, watch my other videos for tuples, sets, and how to define functions. Thanks for watching.